ma'am, before we start with the questioning? May I be allowed to make a short opening statement? Uh, as, to the, as, as we did to the other uh, candidates, uh, we limited the opening statement to three minutes. Can you do it in three minutes? Uh, I hope so. Okay. Go ahead then, ma'am. Good afternoon, Honorable Chairman and members of the Judicial and Bar Council. Should I have the good fortune of being appointed Chief Justice, I will bring to this lofty position my 39 continuous years of service in government, 19 years in the Office of the Chief State Council of the Department of Justice, and 20 years in the judiciary. I joined the government and rose from the ranks through devotion to duty, integrity, commitment to excellence, without reliance on any personal or political connections, but always with the assistance of the divine providence, the unseen hand which charted the course of my career in government. It is my long years of service in the government with that. My government service started when I was still under bar. I took the screening examination here in the Supreme Court, and I was hired as a law clerk with a salary of 500 pesos a month. That was in February of 1973. Later on, I served in the office of Chief Justice Fred in the Supreme Court during the, that early time in my career. I was already at the time under the importance of preserving judicial independence and it's my short encounter with Chief Justice Roberto Concepcion. The wholesome working environment in the Supreme Court at that time also fostered the spirit of professionalism. It was also during my stint in the office of Fred Ruiz Castro, the former Chief Justice, that I applied that through President Marcos the creation of a presidential commission with alternative modes of dispute settlement, and that gave birth to the Katarungang Pambarangay it was during the incumbency of the presidents, President Ferdinand Marcos, President Curazon Cojuanco Aquino, and President Fidel Ramos Aquino, and Fidel B. Ramos, who awarded me Medal of Merit for my exemplary service to the government during the peace negotiations. At the Department of Justice, I have worked on diverse and significant legal and constitutional issues confronting the political branches of the government during tranquil and normal times and during perilous and trying times in our national history from the effectivity of the 1973 Constitution, the Freedom Constitution or the Proclamation number three, which was promulgated by President Corazon Aquino during the existence of the revolutionary go government and under the 1987 Constitution. What are the lessons that I learned at the Department of Justice? First, it is loyalty to the institutions of government to the Constitution and the law. I have learned through my long service in the government that public officials come and go, but institutions remain. So we should all be loyal to the institutions of government, the constitution that gives it life and substance and to, and to the laws that gives it form. Second, I also learned that it is important there be, that there be stability and predictability in our legal system. The opinions of the Secretary of Justice, although persuasive in character, establish precedents or rules intended to guide future actions. So it is imperative that legal questions are consistently decided in accordance with law so that persons similarly situated can be guided in their action 
and expect the same ruling in the future. This is important for stability and predictability in our legal order. The third lesson that I learned is that the political branches of the government are equally concerned with, constitutional, with the constitutionality of their actions. The Secretary of Justice as Attorney General renders opinion for all heads of government, uh, departments, bureaus and offices, the Office of the President, uh, members of Congress, constitutional commissions. And in the course of this work, I came to realize that legislators, together with the President, are concerned, are so much concerned with the constitutionality of their actions. And that is precisely why they asked the Secretary of Justice if their actions are within constitutional bounds. It is only when actual cases are elevated to the court that the power of judicial review is invoked and exercised. So in the first place, the political branches of the government, Congress, and the Office of the President would have the first crack of determining the applicability of the Constitution to whatever decisions they may take in the course of their exercise of their functions. They have all the vital information that they need in making policy decisions. The President especially has access to uh, um, security, uh, security and intelligence information, uh, technical studies, empirical data, which, is, which are not available to the court. And therefore, it is for, the, for, for this reason that I believe that the um, judiciary should, in the exercise of its expanded power of judicial review, should exercise circumspection and utmost care. How many more minutes, uh, Justice Tess? Um, just uh, maybe You'll... two minutes, uh, Mr. Oh. Uh, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also ahead. learned that, that in, promise of two minutes <laughs> two long minutes <laughs> um, I also uh, understood the importance of technology at first we were using electric typewriters then we shifted to computers and word processors it was a difficult adjustment but it turned out to be very good in the long run so uh, um, I believe that we should emphasize also the introduction of technology in government service. I had greater exposure to this when I was promoted to the Sandigan Bayan and later on to the Supreme Court. So I, at the Sandigan Bayan, what did I learn? You know, I was not, um, I was not from the judiciary. I, I, I came from the Department of Justice. But my work in the Department of Justice helped a lot in the discharge of my functions in the Sandigan Bayan. And that is where I learned that experience really is the best teacher. So in the, when, I was, when I took over the Coco Levy case, in six months, I was able to decide that. That case was, was um, um, the, the, the decision of that case has long been delayed. It has been in court for 16 years already. Now, because of my exposure to legal issues, legal problems in the Department of Justice, uh, it took me a very short period of time to dispose of that case. I also was able to harness the legal knowledge that I gained in the Department of Justice and was able to use it for the benefit of all judges and all members together with the justices in the judiciary. The step increments which is allowed by law since 1982, was not applied to the judiciary. It was already 1997 when I joined the judiciary, and that was the only time that I, that I initiated the process of applying this step increment to all members of the judiciary, and true enough, it was approved by the judiciary without being promoted simply by their long service in the judiciary. And for the for 
one who is not who is a fake 